Hey bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my June wrap up. I had an amazing reading month in June. As of this moment, I am six books ahead of my Goodreads goal, which is crazy. I've never been that far ahead on my reading goals. The last couple of months, I've just been reading a lot of books. So this month, I read a total of six books. Out of these six books, I had three four-star books and three five-star books. So I really enjoyed every single thing that I've read this month. Or I guess every single thing that I finished this month. <laughs> because there is one book that I started reading at the very beginning of the month and I'm still reading it because I'm not exactly loving it. Out of these six books, two of them were the start of a series. So not really doing so great at cutting down on the number of series that I'm reading, but that's okay. <laughs> The six books that I read were The Ruins by Scott Smith, Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, The Black Prism by Brent Weeks, and The Trees Crept In by Don Kurtigich, Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate, and Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I will have timestamps in the description box for where I talk about each of these books so that you guys can jump to the ones that you're most interested in hearing about. I did film this wrap up in two different sections. Because the month ended on a Sunday, I went ahead and filmed my thoughts on the first three books that I finished, a couple days before the month ended and now I'm sitting down to film my thoughts on the last three books that I finished in the month. Okay, so if you want to know my thoughts on these books, then stay tuned. Hey guys, so it is June 29th right now and I have currently finished reading four books, but I'm also currently in the middle of three books these three behind me and I'm more than halfway through with all of them. I know I only have tonight and tomorrow to finish things, but I know I'm going to finish at least one maybe two, maybe all three, but probably just two. I'm usually the kind of person who doesn't like to film my wrap ups until the month is completely over with because I sometimes finish things on the last day of the month. However, the idea of sitting down and talking about six or seven books in one go is a little bit intimidating. So I thought that I would go ahead and sit down and film half of my wrap up right now. So I'm going to talk about the first three books that I finished in the month of June. The first book that I finished was The Ruins by Scott Smith, which I gave five out of five stars. This is an adult horror book and I absolutely loved it. I mostly listened to this on audio, which I accessed through the app Scribd. I have started including a referral link to Scribd in my description box. Basically, it's a link that they send to pretty much anybody who uses the service, where if you share it with a friend, the person who signs up for Scribd using your link gets two free months and I also get one free month. So it's a win-win situation. I have used Scribd for multiple months now and I rely on it a lot at this point. I listen to a lot of audiobooks through it and I feel like I have enough experience with it that I can recommend it to you guys. Feel free to like DM me on Twitter or Instagram and ask me questions if you have any about Scribd if you're interested in it. Anyways, back to the ruins. In addition to listening to the audiobook, on Scribd. I also have a physical copy of it that I bought from a library book sale. It's a mass market paperback and so I didn't read out of it a whole lot because I don't love mass market paperbacks but I did a little bit. This book has been on my TBR for a while because I've heard such good things about it and I was so happy that I pulled it out of my TBR jar for the summer that I started reading it before June even started and I finished it really early in June. This book takes place in Mexico and it's about a group of friends who are on a vacation there. One of the people that they meet at their resort wants to go looking for his brother who followed a girl basically to an Aztec excavation site and hasn't come back. So this group of friends goes with some people that they met to try and find this dude's brother. And then things go down from there. This is a survival type of horror story and there's definitely a lot of body horror so if that's not something you're comfortable with I wouldn't recommend this book. I feel like this is a really good horror book to read in the summer because these people are in like a rainforest type of setting where it's like really hot and they go to Mexico during like summer vacation. The horror element that's going on in this book is definitely not what I was expecting when going into it. And I don't really want to say more than that because I don't want to give anything away. But I just I thought that the horror element was going to be something else than what it actually was. 
but I actually really liked what it was. I thought it was super interesting. For me, this was definitely a plot driven book. There is a cast of characters, but I didn't feel like any of the characters were necessarily very complex, but I was totally okay with that because that's not exactly what I was there for. I just thought that this situation that these characters found themselves in to be absolutely terrifying and it was fascinating to see the things that they did to try and survive. I thought a lot of the book was really realistic as far as like the survival elements. I remember while I was reading this book that I thought at multiple points that this would make a really good movie. Well, turns out that they did make a movie. I wouldn't go watch the trailer of that movie unless you want to know more about the horrific thing that is happening in this book because it definitely gives away more than what's in the synopsis of the book which movies tend to do. But now that I've read the book I think I definitely want to see the movie. I don't think the movie did all that well but I love horror movies anyways, even bad ones, so I'm definitely going to be watching this at some point. Unfortunately, it's not available on any streaming services, at least not for free. I also thought that The Ruins had a really solid ending for a horror book. I feel like endings can be really hard in horror, but I found the ending to this book to be really satisfying and I highly enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun reading this book and I would definitely read more Scott Smith in the future. I haven't really heard his name thrown around a lot other than for this book, so if you guys have read any other Scott Smith and know where I should go next with him, definitely leave your recommendations down in the comment section. The next book that I finished in June was Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, which I gave four out of five stars. I mostly listened to this on audiobook, which I got out from my library, and I also had a physical hardcover copy of it, which I also got from my library. This was my first time reading Mira Grant, who was also Sean and McGuire. Mira Grant is her pen name for when she writes horror books. I've had my eye on her feed series for quite a while because I wanna read more zombie books and that's a series that is often recommended to me. But I keep putting it off because I'm trying not to start new series, even though I'm still doing that. But Into the Drowning Deep is a standalone. It does have a prequel novella to go along with it. And I actually thought that this book was going to be a series because it's listed on Goodreads as a series. But then someone brought to my attention that it's only listed as a series because of this prequel novella, which I haven't decided if I'm gonna read yet. I don't feel like I really need to, but I'm also kind of interested. Anyways, this book, is often described as like a mermaid horror book. It's a creature horror. I think that's what they're called. I'm still learning my horror subgenres. Basically it takes place over the Mariana Trench and has killer mermaids in it. The main character is invited on this scientific mission to learn more or try to discover these mermaids that actually killed her sister on a previous scientific mission. Something that surprised me about this book was that I thought more of it was going to take place under the ocean, but honestly most of it takes place on a boat above the Mariana Trench and not in the Mariana Trench like I thought it was going to. These mermaids were definitely super interesting and very scary. I thought this book was really suspenseful. It definitely held my attention the whole time. Something that I absolutely loved about this book was how much science there was in it. This is somewhat of a research mission to find these mermaids, but the mission is being put on actually by a reality TV company. So there's like a film crew there as well, which added an interesting twist to things. But a lot of the characters are scientists and you see from their points of view, they talk about the science behind the mermaids and other creatures in the ocean. And I loved all of the science stuff. I really enjoyed myself through most of this book. The ending was a little bit lackluster or underwhelming. I thought it was interesting, but I just didn't love the way that it ended. Like I said, I feel like endings can be really hard in horror. There was also a good amount of diversity in this book. There are some characters who are deaf. The main character is bi and there is a gay female character. And there's probably some other diversity that I'm not remembering, but it was definitely a diverse cast of characters. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. And if Killer Mermaids sounds interesting to you, I definitely recommend to check it out. It was just missing a little something to make me want to give it five stars. And then the last book that I'm going to talk about in this clip is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks, which I gave four out of five stars. I listened to this on audiobook 
from Scribd, but also had an ebook copy from my library. I read this as a buddy read with Murphy from Murphy Napier, whose channel I will link in the description box for you. Although let's be honest, you probably know who she is. I hadn't planned to read this book anytime soon. Like I said earlier, I'm trying not to start too many new series. I'm trying to finish series, but this has been on my TBR for a really long time. When Murphy told me she was gonna read it in July, I couldn't resist and decided I wanted to buddy read it with her. If we have kind of similar thoughts on things, just remember that we read it together. The Black Prism is an adult high fantasy book and it centers around Gavin Guile, who is the prism in this world, which is kind of like a political figure, but also a religious figure. This magic system, I'm sure you guys have heard this before, this magic system is based on the colors of the rainbow and most people in this world can only use one to two to three of the colors, but the prism is someone who can actually use all of the colors. It's about him. At the beginning of the book, he finds out that he has a bastard son who's 15 years old named Kip. And that's where the story gets going. I had heard nothing but good things about this magic system and that was definitely my favorite part of the book. It takes a while to fully understand the magic system. So I think it's important for you to have patience when you're getting into this book. It does drop you right into the middle of the world and you kind of have to figure things out as you go along. But at the same time, Brent Weeks doesn't throw everything at you at once. He throws little pieces here and there. The only thing about the magic system that I didn't like was that it was really hard for me to picture. Like you would think it would visually be really cool because of all of these colors. When you draft these colors, which is what they call like it doing the magic, the colors turn into like this physical substance, but there were definitely parts of it that were hard for me to picture. And I kind of wish that someone would make a movie out of this just so that I could see some of the things that Brent Weeks was trying to describe. Cause he definitely takes the time to describe what it should look like, but there were some descriptions that lost me. And the characters in this book are definitely morally gray. The main character, Gavin, he read to me as like a good character, but he's also done things that were not good things. So I definitely have mixed feelings about Gavin, but overall I like him as a character. His bastard son Kip, on the other hand, is a very annoying character that seems to be like a general consensus in people who've read this book. I don't think people really like Kip's POV. He's a 15 year old kid. He's really annoying. He often makes really dumb decisions. Like in his head, he'll think, oh, I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't say this. And then he, does the thing that he knows he's not supposed to do and that would drive me absolutely nuts but I also think it's kind of supposed to. The main thing other than the magic system that I really loved about this book was that the main characters especially Gavin has a lot of secrets in his past that you as the reader don't know about at the beginning of the book obviously but Things are like slowly revealed as you go through the book. Brent Weeks is definitely into slowly revealing things. Personally, I really liked that because these mysteries that I knew existed kept me wanting to read more and wanting to know what was gonna happen next and wanting to find out more about Gavin's past and other people's past and how things were connected. All of these characters had their own motivations. It gave them a certain perspective when looking at other characters that may or may not be the full truth because they don't know that other character's secrets. It just created this like complex web of character motivations that I thought was absolutely intriguing and I loved it. The last thing that I wanna to touch on is of course the controversy around whether or not this book is sexist. And I'm not gonna really say either way. I'm just gonna kinda of give my impression of things. I will say that I tend to be fairly sensitive to the male gaze, but honestly, I don't feel like that's what's going on in this book. The impression that I got while reading this book was more that Brent Weeks has some sort of obsession with bodies in general because not only does he talk about the female body a lot, he also talks about the male body a lot and he talks about fatness a lot, like the size of people's bodies. Kip is a very fat character and that is mentioned a lot of times and I think part of that is that Brent Weeks is trying to convey that Kip is very self-conscious 
about his size, but I just felt like it was mentioned more than needed to be. There was definitely a lot more naked characters than I felt like needed to be. But at the same time, it wasn't super offensive to me. It was more something that I noticed and I could see why some people would feel like this book is sexist, but just being completely honest, that's not how it came across to me. And honestly, a lot of times when bodies were mentioned, whether it was male, female, or fat people. I felt like it was done to be humorous, like it was the butt of a joke, but it wasn't a humor that really resonated with me. I mean, in general, the humor in this book didn't really resonate with me. There were things that I could tell were meant to be funny that really just made me roll my eyes. Another thing that was a miss for me a little bit was the writing style. I mean, overall, Brentwick's writing style is really straightforward and very easy to read. The chapters are really short, which helped me to read this book really quickly. So in that sense, the writing was really readable, but this book is in third person and Brentwick's randomly will drop in in a sentence or two of direct thoughts from the character that would often kind of jar me and like pull me out of the story a little bit because that's not typically how the third person is written. You know, it wasn't like he thought blah blah blah. It would just be like, bam, there's a thought. <laughs> and it was just really weird for me to read that. All right, those are my thoughts on the first three books that I finished this month. I will check in with you guys when the month is officially over with the last one or two books that I finish. Bye. Okay, now that the month is finally over, I'm gonna sit down and talk about the last three books that I read in June. So the next book that I finished was And the Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. This is a YA horror book. This has been on my TBR for a really long time. I've heard really good things about the audiobook, and so that is definitely the way that I wanted to read this, which I had from my library. I also checked out a physical hardcover copy from my library as well, and I was really glad that I did because there was some extra formatting that was in the physical book that was fun to look at while I was listening. But if I had to pick between the two, like what was my preferred way to read it, I would definitely go with the audiobook because guys, I have never listened to an audiobook like this. It was such a production. It was so cool. You know, it's a horror book, so it's supposed to be scary. And I've listened to other horror books before, but I've never listened to one like this. The narrator was amazingly talented. Her name is Polly Lee, and I've definitely listened to her before and enjoyed other books that she's done. She did such amazing voices for like the old creepy woman, for the dude in the book, for the little kid in the book. But it wasn't just her narration. They added things in like creaking noises and the wind blowing. This is one of those books where the main character starts to question like what's reality. It definitely has like a paranormal thing going on. You don't always know what's real. The main character kind of like has lots of thoughts in her head. And so the narrator would have like backtracks where she's like echoing or saying different things other than the text that was in the book and there was just like so much added to this audiobook it was amazing obviously i'm getting really excited about it i will say that if you don't like scary things i probably wouldn't listen to the audiobook because i think it's really creepy i don't get scared very easily while reading and while i still didn't get scared while reading this it was definitely like oh yeah this is creepy <laughs> so i don't recommend it for the faint of heart but if it sounds like something you'd like listening to i totally recommend going the audiobook route so in my tbr I said that I wasn't entirely sure what this book was about, but I thought it was about a girl who lived in a town and like the trees kept getting closer to where she lived. And I got it like half right. So this girl takes her little sister to go live with their aunt, their crazy aunt. She lives kind of like in the middle of nowhere, just in like this really big old house. The trees are the woods that are close to her house and those trees one day start getting closer and closer to the house. So it's not like a whole town. It's a very isolated setting. The only thing is that I feel like a lot of people aren't gonna like the ending. I personally loved the ending. And when I was looking through like reviews on Goodreads, a lot of them were like, that ending was really weird. I don't know if I like that. And I do think that some people are definitely not going to like it. I just, I loved it. It reminded me of another story that I really, really love as well. But yeah, I recognize that the ending is not gonna work for everyone and it makes me hesitant to recommend it to people. But I gotta be honest and say that I love the ending and I love this book so much. Definitely a new favorite. Don Kurtigich just came out with a new YA horror book. It's like a fantasy horror that's a retelling of Faust, which I don't really know that much about. 
but I'm pretty sure the audiobook got a similar treatment based on like the little snippet I heard online and I'm very excited to read that one. And that one's called Teeth in the Mist. I talked about it in my anticipated releases video. Oh, I also want to add that I really enjoyed the romance in this book. I definitely wasn't sure what I thought of it when it first kind of cropped up, but it grew on me rather quickly and I really loved the love interest and by the end of this book I was in tears guys. I wasn't like sobbing but I was somewhere between tearing up and sobbing. Like I was more than just tearing up but I wasn't quite sobbing. <laughs> Okay, the next book that I finished in the month of June was another new favorite. That was And Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. And I listened to this on audio through Scribd. This book is a historical fiction book and I was reading it for my workbook club. I actually wasn't planning to even finish it in June because workbook club is next week and I usually finish my workbook club book like right before book club. But this book was just so good that I could not stop reading it. In fact, I stayed up till like 1 a.m on Saturday night slash Sunday morning reading this book because I was close to the end and I wanted to finish it. Even though I often read right before bed, I usually don't stay up really late. Not anymore. Definitely used to when I was a kid, but I have a really hard time staying up past midnight these days. And so that doesn't happen often, but I could not put this book down. And of course the ending of this book had me sobbing. <laughs> At about 1.30, my husband walked into the bedroom to come to bed and he looked at me and he said, why are you still up? Oh, you were finishing a book, weren't you? And you were crying. You were crying a lot, weren't you? And I was like, yeah, that that's what happened. <laughs> So let me back up and explain what this book is about. Going into it, I really had no idea. I didn't even read the synopsis because I wanted to be surprised. I kind of wish I had known what it was about because I started reading it and I was like, oh, this book is about adoption, but it's not your typical adoption story. So this is a historical fiction that is based on the true story of Georgia Tan and the Tennessee Children's Home. Basically, this woman, back during the Great Depression was stealing kids from poor families and then adopting them, but really she was more like selling them to people who were rich. It was this whole scandal. I had no idea that this had happened. It was fascinating to hear, but also very heartbreaking to learn about. So this story is about some children that this happened to, some siblings. So there's two timelines, and for the audiobook, each timeline has a different narrator, which I thought was super helpful because it gave me that audio cue to know what timeline I was in. The past timeline, I will say, was way more interesting to me, at least until we got to about the 50% mark, and then the present timeline also became equally as interesting as the past timeline. But the past timeline is about Real Foss and how one day she and her siblings get taken to the Tennessee Children's Home, what happens to them there, and how she fights so hard to keep them together. The present timeline is about, honestly I don't remember the main character's name, but this woman who is the daughter of a senator in one of the Carolinas. So she comes from a really prominent family and she kind of stumbles upon a mystery relating to her grandmother's past and she starts digging to try and find out more information. And you get to see through the course of the book how those two timelines come together and how people in those timelines are related. So the present timeline I didn't always enjoy, especially in the beginning, because I had a harder time relating to the main character. Her life is just completely different from anything that I know. But once she really started digging into her grandmother's past and I started seeing the connections between the two timelines, I got really interested in what was going on with her. And yeah, by the end of this, I was just really sad about the fact that this was something that had really happened. This book was really emotional and honestly I couldn't help but keep thinking about some of the stuff that's been happening lately down by the border, the children being separated from their families. It was just really heartbreaking to think about and to imagine how scared these kids are to be separated from their families and every Buddy that they know. I don't read a whole lot of historical fiction, but I absolutely love this. I am open to reading more Lisa Wingate. I haven't really heard of her before or read any of her other books, obviously, but I definitely want to now. If you guys like hard-hitting historical fiction, then I definitely recommend giving this one a try. Okay, and the last book that I finished in June was Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I read a 
paperback arc of this or an advanced reader copy that I received when I went to the North Texas Teen Book Festival earlier this year. This is a book I had been looking forward to for a really long time because I've been following the author Kat Cho. She has a YouTube channel which I will link for you pretty much around since when she got the book deal I think. So I've been following her publication journey and I was really looking forward to this one because I knew it was based on Korean mythology. So this is a YA urban fantasy that is actually set in Korea. It's based on the myth of the kumio which I asked my mom to try to like explain what that is kind of like. She said it's kind of like a werewolf but with a fox so in the moonlight or on the full moon a beautiful woman can like turn into a fox type of creature and they prey on men. That's not exactly what the myth was in this book but it was very similar. So my favorite thing about this book was definitely the Korean mythology and just like the world building. This is set in Korea and its own voices and it's very obvious because Kat Cho knows all of the right ways to address people and she talks about Korean food so much and it made my mouth water. She just knows like the customs and like just the way the things are and that was really comforting for me to read. I was a little concerned that the book was like too Korean because she uses a lot of Korean words that I feel like I understood and some of the words I didn't even know exactly what they meant. I had to like ask my mom what they meant because Kat Cho expects you to figure things out based on context clues and I could figure out like the gist of a word but I wanted to know exactly what it meant and I just wonder if that would be confusing for other people who are not like as familiar with Korean culture or Korean words but I really haven't seen any I mean it's a brand new release so not that many people have read it but the few reviews I've looked at nobody's really mentioned being confused or anything like that so maybe that's me just overthinking it. I also mostly liked the romance that was in this book. I really liked the love interest. He was not like a bad boy and it wasn't like an enemies to lovers. It was a guy who was genuinely interested in this girl. She's very standoffish because she's had to move around a lot and doesn't really have any friends so she's kind of like suspicious of him and he kind of breaks down her wall and they build a friendship from there and I just I thought the relationship was really cute. I did think that towards the middle of the book the plot kind of slowed down for me and I liked the way that it ended but I definitely enjoyed the first half more than the second half. The ending of this book did make me tear up a little bit. It made me a little bit emotional and overall I just I really like this book. I kind of struggled with the rating because I enjoyed it but I didn't like love love it. I think part of that is just that I'm not a huge fan of urban fantasy but in the end the Korean setting and all of the Korean mythology built into this book was so like familiar and comforting for me and I loved being able to see that representation in a YA book that it won me over and I decided on a four star rating but it is probably on like the lower end of a four star rating and I'm definitely interested to see where the series goes in the next book. By the end of the book I wasn't sure why this was going to be a series because it seemed like everything was wrapped up but then there's an epilogue at the end that definitely opens things up for future books. Alright guys those are the six books that I read this month. If you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books after hearing me talk about them let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time bookworms, keep reading. Bye. But then someone brought me, brought, but then someone, but then someone brought me from Murphy, from Murphy Napier, from Nerp, Murphy, Murphy, which I accessed on Scribd. I absolutely love the world building, to, um, but I couldn't, no. Bye.